On today's edition of the Locked On Eagles podcast, I've been waiting for this show for a long time. Kelly Green jerseys are back. We're going to react plus reactions to training camp practice on Sunday. Lots of takeaways on this Monday edition of your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast, Locked On Eagles. You are Locked On Eagles, your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much for making Locked On Eagles your first listen each and every day. Shout out to our everydayers for making us your first listen Monday through Friday. We're always part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Louis DiBiase riding solo. And man, have I been waiting, as I mentioned, to do this show since I started hosting Locked On Eagles after Michael Kiss and Ben Solak in the 2018 offseason. Every single year, Jeffrey Lurie would bring up during the owners' meetings how badly he would like the NFL to change its rules, its policy on their helmets. Because for years and years, the NFL allowed one helmet per player. And it was justified in a way by saying it has to do with concussions, like player safety. The more helmets you have, like what maybe the less safe it is, which doesn't make any sense to me. And I said this on the show so many times because why not just fit a player for two helmets or three or four at the time you're fitting them for their normal helmet, their main helmet for the regular season during the summer. And that never made sense to me because a player would get traded at the trade deadline, like a Golden Tate in 2018. He doesn't have to wear his Lions helmet. The Eagles fit him for a new helmet, what, week 10? So it never made sense why this two-helmet rule was not in place yet. And Jeffrey Lurie every year would say, I want to bring Kelly Green jerseys back, but we got to fix this policy. Last year, the rule finally was changed. Lurie brought in a black helmet to go with the black alternate because he was cooking something up for an entire year trying to, and you know, last year I was a little upset that Kelly green jerseys weren't back, but it was worth the wait to make sure that they got this right because the Eagles leaked. It was supposed to release officially today and uh, the pro shop at the link started selling merchandise. What was so cool was that fans were lining up thousands of fans. It looked like, or at least hundreds to maybe a thousand were lined up tailgating. This is why I love the Eagles fan base. They were lined up tailgating outside of Lincoln financial field for the pro shop just to get Kelly green jerseys. And if I was there down in Philly, I would have absolutely did the exact same thing. But anyway, as I digress Saturday, the Kelly green jerseys did leak. So the Eagles said, screw it. We're going to post everything we have on social media and get this thing out here. And they absolutely, I'm going to share my screen with our video listeners, uh, viewers, I should say, to take a look at these jerseys. They are everything that I hoped that they were going to be. All right, let's pull this up. Look at this picture of Jalen Hurts. In the 1990s style Kelly Green jersey with the eagle on the side. I mean, the way even just the promoting team did this with the 90s look in the background Brandon Graham the socks the pants the jersey everything about it the color is perfect and that's keep it simple we're some of the best jerseys in NFL history and they're back and I think of all the teams in the NFL right now the Eagles might have the best alternate in football and I'm so glad it's back. I've only gotten to see those jerseys personally one time ever in 2010 when they wore the 1960s look against the Green Bay Packers week one, which, of course, was Michael Vick's big on back game. But, you know, I've always seen highlights of Kelly Green, but I've missed out on that era. You know, I'm only 26 years old. So to get this now twice in 2023 is so exciting. I wish there were more games that they were wearing them, but they're going to be wearing them against the Miami Dolphins in October. And then the weekend of Thanksgiving, they're wearing them against the Buffalo Bills. I would have liked to see them wear them against like an NFC East rival. It would have been awesome to wear Kelly Green at home at the link against the Dallas Cowboys or the New York Giants. But to me personally, I, I think you could, I kind of like that they went with like the out of conference games, like another reason to get excited. I'm from Buffalo. I'm going to be at that game with my entire family, Eagles Bills. So the fact that they're wearing Kelly Green for me, that was one of the games, biasly, of course, that I wanted them to wear them, and they're going to. And then against Miami, oh my gosh, could you imagine if the Dolphins wear their vintage white jerseys with the Eagles wearing Kelly Green? And then the Bills, if they were the standing Buffalo or they're all whites with the Eagles wearing the all green Kelly Green look, 
It's going to be so much fun. Jalen Hurts looks great. Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham, Devontae Smith, everybody that did those promotions. I, I'm nerding out. I'm a big sports uniform guy, not just in football, but basketball and hockey. And this was definitely a really cool day that we've been waiting for for a long time. Again, they haven't worn these jerseys in 13 years. And that was a different look. Again, that was more of the 1960s Chuck Bednarik look. There was no logo on the shoulder. This one, straight up 1990s. This is, let's grab Randall Cunningham's uniform and let's bring him back and put him on Jalen Hurts. The white eagle on the shoulder is they've got that Nike, awesome athletic look with the holes in the chest. Just the perfect shade of Kelly Green. It wasn't too dark. I feel like sometimes in the 90s that Kelly Green was a little bit darker the more the years went on. I think this has more of that traditional 60s type of shade. It's, it's a lot brighter, which I think is perfect. In the pants with the green and white stripe, oh my gosh. Totally nerding out. Kelly Green jerseys are back. It's an exciting time to be a Philadelphia Eagles fan. And what a team to rock these jerseys, by the way. I mean, the swag on this offense with the jerseys, the visors that all of these players wear, the arm sleeves, they're going to look good. I'm a big proponent of look good, play good. I think if you have really bad jerseys, if you have bad equipment, to me, that can make you, like Sam Bradford in 2015, I looked at him and the helmet was way too big for him, the super long sleeves, and I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, this is not a quarterback. This is not my franchise quarterback. I think you got to look a certain way when it comes to the uniform for me to take you seriously. You throw these Kelly Green jerseys on this talented football team, whew, absolutely love it, absolutely love it. Let's get back to some real football talk, though, coming up next. Training camp on Sunday had a lot of takeaways Got some thoughts on the offense and defense coming up next right here on the Locked On Eagles podcast. And guys, today's show is sponsored by FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the Locked On Podcast Network. Take your first swing at betting MLB baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks. You're going to land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's $200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to go first with that home run of the game. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than the FanDuel app, America's number one sports book. So sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get up to $200 back in bonus bets. Not just the MLB, by the way. Bet on some futures for the NFL. Take Jalen Hurts to win MVP or Jalen Carter to win Rookie of the Year. It's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get up to $200 back in bonus bets. FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, everybody, welcome back into Locked On Eagles, a Monday edition of the show. Thanks so much for making us your first listen each and every day. What an exciting time of the year. Eagles training camp officially underway. The Kelly Green jerseys came back today. That, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm nerding out on them. I cannot wait. Again, they play in two games with Kelly Green this year, the Miami Dolphins in October and then the Buffalo Bills in November. Uh, some training camp updates, though. Practice did happen on Sunday, and it has kind of been the same theme of the last few practices open to the media. A lot of the same guys are shining. It's a lot of the new additions. Probably, I, I would say a lot of the veterans are doing really well. You know, it's kind of status quo for a lot of them. But I think the focus is more on the new additions, the replacements that Howie Roseman brought in through free agency, the draft, a lot of the rookie class from last year that are stepping up into bigger roles this year, like Jordan Davis, Nicobe Dean, and Cam Jurgens. So a lot of the same guys are being showcased, but I think they're also just having great camps. So I'm going to talk about a few players again that stole the show on Sunday. One of them, and it's super exciting because this was not a guy I think many players had planned to be part of this offense even draft night he was not on my radar until the Detroit Lions traded up to get Jameer Gibbs or traded down from six to what was it 12 and then they took Jameer Gibbs I'm like oh they just signed David Montgomery as well in free agency is DeAndre Swift available but I remember when the Eagles signed Rashad Penny in free agency I'm like this is probably their backfield it's Rashad Penny it's Kenneth Gainwell and Boston Scott and it's Trey Sermon and then suddenly DeAndre Swift's available you barely trade anything for him and I still was like, okay, another great, young, efficient player that's going to be part of this. I was just more thinking of the collective, right? Of all the entire backfield. I'm like, they can definitely replace Miles Sanders uh, for the money. I think the production is there, the efficiency. But I didn't really like think about how much of an impact just one of these guys could make, specifically in DeAndre Swift because of his receiving ability. And Gino and I have talked about that on the show a lot over the last few months, months about the dynamic 
that new dynamic that Swift brings to the backfield that the Eagles really have not had since 2019 Miles Sanders. And before that, you didn't consistently have a really good natural receiving back like this since Darren Sproles and LaShawn McCoy. Kenneth Gainwell has good receiving ability, but not like this. He doesn't have the explosiveness, the smoothness in the open field, the footwork of DeAndre Swift. The natural hands catcher that Swift is. I mean, he caught a 35-yard pass, it sounded like, on Sunday from Jalen Hurts. Um, just continuing to make plays, not just in the checkdown game. That's what Kenneth Gainwell did a lot. Um, and I think Gainwell can do more at Memphis. He lined up in the slot a lot. The Eagles did that a lot in the preseason over the last few years. So Gainwell, I'm not saying is a limited receiver, but DeAndre Swift is just on another level, I think. And on Sunday, yet again, it looks like he's just such a natural, clearly the best pass catching running back the Eagles have. And that is a dynamic that they have not had in years, especially the downfield receiving part is what I'm focused on. If you can get him lined up against linebackers in the open field, I mean, just down the field, you know, along the sidelines, that's a huge part of this offense that can keep Jalen Hurts healthy too. If you can add an extra emphasis on throwing to running backs, which they have this off season, it hasn't just been to Swift, but a lot of reporters are pointing out, Hey, they're throwing the ball a lot to Kenneth Gainwell Boston Scott, heck, even Rashad Penny, who's not the most natural receiving back of the four. He's probably the worst. I would say he's better than Trey Sermon in that way, but not Scott Gainwell and Swift. But even Penny has been catching passes this year. So to hear that DeAndre is being used in so many different ways, how natural of a receiver he is. Last week, he had a 40-yard reception where he's falling down, he trips, and then on the turf, he still brings it in. That's really exciting because... They're just have, they haven't had that dynamic. And you saw in 2019 when you had that in Miles Sanders and Boston Scott consistently, what that can do for an offense. I don't suddenly want Jalen Hurts checking down and not wanting to run as much, but I do feel like they need to pick and choose their spots better in those ways to make sure your quarterback stays healthy. And how do you do that? Add another weapon that you want to give the football to, especially after you go through all your reads to have that kind of option. It's like your fourth or fifth guy. That's really exciting. And DeAndre Swift, I mean, I think he's going to have a much bigger role this year than – I'm not saying that I that I thought because I, I knew he was going to be the probably the featured back in, in this, you know, committee approach. But at the same time, you're like, the backfield is – you know, it's, it's part of this collective that is the Eagles running attack. It's like a mind hive of the elite offensive line, Jalen Hurts. It's a byproduct of all of that. But no, DeAndre Swift is not just going to be a guy that you win with. I think – because of this receiving ability and just overall athleticism, if he stays healthy, this can be a guy that you win because of. He can be somebody that elevates this rushing attack and overall backfield attack to a new level. You know what I mean? Because I feel like the, the talking points for me and Gino and a lot of people have been, hey, they're going to be just fine without Miles Sanders. They basically are going to do just as well. And they spent the, the, the focus has been on how much less they spent to get replacements that can be just as good as Sanders. But... Swift can be better, and he can be a, a different dynamic than what the Eagles have been used to over the years. I mean, this can really be, and less like Darren Sproles, because DeAndre Swift is a really good running back that you can give the football to 15-plus times a game. Obviously, that wasn't Darren Sproles. This could be a lot more like 2019 rookie Miles Sanders or what you had in LaShawn McCoy back in the day from 2009 up until 2014. So DeAndre Swift is shining. Quez Watkins sounded like he had a great day again. Four really impressive catches one in a honey hole along the left sidelines down the field. Jalen Hurts put it on the money. Quez Watkins shining a lot. This is very similar to the hype. I remember in 2021, he was good all summer, and they said, keep an eye out for Quez Watkins. We know the focus is on Jalen Rager. Then Quez blew up in the preseason. Remember that big touchdown, the first play against the Pittsburgh Steelers? Went on to have a really good year. Quez is motivated to have a bounce-back season after a down 2022. I think you look at this, this passing attack, when you add an improved Quez Watkins, you add in DeAndre Swift to this backfield, a new element you haven't had as a receiving back. All meets Zacchaeus over Zach Paschal. I really think this passing attack, and it was hard. It's hard to top what they did last year. I think it's going to be just as good. I think it's going to be better this year. I think they're going to throw the football more. And the reporters were saying yesterday just how natural and easy things are coming to Jalen Hurts right now. And that's kind of getting lost in the weeds because we all – Assume now he's the guy. He's elite. Like, you don't have to question Jalen anymore. There's no talking points. Like, yeah, he, this is who he is. He's a top five quarterback. But to hear natural and easy for me when it comes to progressions and accuracy, that's very important. That's when, when suddenly the processing, the mental and accuracy side of things become like muscle memory for you. 
that's when you get an elite quarterback of 10 plus years that sustain that level of play. I mean, he's already, he's always been an elite mobile quarterback. If he is now an elite processor, an accurate passer that improves every single year, this is literally the definition of the ultimate weapon. And you haven't always got that with mobile quarterbacks. How many of them are also a top tier mobile quarterback, but they're also a top tier processor and a top tier accurate passer. You've got like Patrick Mahomes, I think Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, how many other guys have consistently been that? And even Lamar, as much as I'm a Lamar guy, the first few years, I don't know if he was elite in accuracy and processing. I think he was a lot better than people gave him credit for, but there haven't been a lot of complete ultimate weapons like this that have, you know, the mind of Tom Brady, the accuracy of, you know, fill in the blank Peyton Manning, or I don't know why I'm going all the way that far back. And then also the the mobility of Jalen. I mean, this is rare and the the decision making too that's the thing even with like a guy like Josh Allen or what we saw with Carson Wentz sometimes you might have one or two of those traits but you're a little more reckless the turnovers are high with Jalen's like the turnovers are low too it's really just the injuries if he can stay healthy and not miss any games this year the Eagles have their quarterback and I think with these new weapons and the guys you already have the big three and Smith Brown and Goddard This passing attack is going to be elite. And last year, the focus was still always about balance and how well the Eagles run the ball and the step that Jalen took. But now, I think the talking point this year is going to be they took that step and they're like, this is one of the best passing attacks in the entire NFL. And how do you defend them? For sure. It's it's so exciting. Camp sounds like on defense too. Jordan Davis um, getting a lot more forefront looks. A lot of time last year when Jordan Davis was out there, they had their five linemen out there on the field. He's your, you know, uh, interior nose tackle. Sounds more like when they're four linemen, they're rushing four. Jordan Davis is getting more looks than he did last year. And that's huge because, again, you need him to justify. Look, I don't think he needs to be an elite pass rusher to be a good player in this league. If you get Jordan Davis from last year, the first half of the season, That's one of the best run-stopping defensive linemen in football. That's a damn good nose tackle. That's a great rotational piece. That's a good player in this league that you need, especially nowadays with lighter boxes because you're trying to stop the pass. You're trying to stop the deep pass. You need Jordan Davis in the modern-day NFL. There's a place for him now. There wasn't for a while. Now there is. But to justify the Eagles' investment in him, the trade-up, allowing some of these linemen to walk this offseason, he does need to take that step as a pass rusher. Sounds like the Eagles have been comfortable enough with the steps he's taken to give him a lot of first-team reps with Fletcher Cox as that second defensive tackle. So that's really exciting as well. A lot of great stuff coming from camp. Not a whole lot of this guy struggling or this guy. Little issues with Nicholas Morrow. I'm definitely concerned about him at linebacker. Sounds like he got burned by DeAndre Swift deep down the field on Sunday. He's a guy that hasn't been shining. Kavon Wallace, I noticed, got first-team reps over Terrell Edmonds. We'll see where that's progressing. Reed Blankenship sounds like he's been the best safety out there so far um, this summer, but it's only one week of camp. We'll see what happens. I've got an Eagles beat reporter coming on this week to update us on everything, so stay tuned for that as well. All right, everybody, let's wrap up this Monday edition of Locked on Eagles with a little more Kelly Green talk. I'm sorry. I'm just so juiced up. This is a podcast I've been waiting to do for a long time. I'm just so excited to get these retro jerseys in, and – I will say, though, there's been some interesting conversations on Twitter over the last few days after Kelly Green was released because Josh Sweat himself actually said he was such a big fan of this new look that he said that this should be the Eagles home and away jersey. Like we Kelly Green should be the full time jerseys. They should replace Midnight Green. And then he still wants the black uniforms to be the alternate, which I, I get it. I will say like the in the Kelly Green versus Midnight Green debate, me and Gino got into it a little bit on Friday. Aesthetically, when it comes to like the actual look of a Kelly Green jersey, then this 90s look that they just came out with now versus the Midnight Green, this jersey's better. I think it looks better. Uh, the design is more crisp. I like brighter colors normally more. I think in the 1990s, that was the best era in all of sports, in the NBA, in the NHL, in the NFL for uniforms of all time. I like the vibrant colors. I think it's, I don't like the dark, you know, the old Kelly Green, not a big fan of. Navy blue, black. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of it. I really like the Eagles black alternates, but it's not one of my top choices when it comes to the Eagles jerseys. I like the home and away uniforms better. I like the Kelly green better. So to me, I like a white on white, like give me a white helmet. I I don't know. I just, I like brighter, I like brighter uniforms, 
But I will say, though, for me, why I still say don't get rid of Midnight Green and keep... I think right now they have the perfect setup. Midnight Green, home and away. Alternates, Kelly Green. Why I think that's perfect, because for me... Again, the Eagles are midnight green. That's what I've... And so it's personal for me. I'm 26. I didn't grow up in the 90s. I know a lot of my older listeners and viewers, I've already seen some on Twitter be like, you know, that's you. For us, the Eagles were Kelly Green my entire life. So I completely get it. Trust me. Totally get it. But the Eagles, for me, have always been midnight green. I think the jersey's getting better and better every year. It's not even really midnight green anymore. It's more of like a dark teal. But I like the look of the the new Midnight Green jerseys ever since, I don't know, dating back to, I think it's when Nike took over in 2014. Since then, it's been getting brighter and brighter. I think they look really crisp. The new Nike jerseys, Midnight Green, I think look amazing. Not to mention, they've won a lot in Midnight Green. You won your only Super Bowl. You went to two others. So... Of the four Super Bowls you've been a part of, three of them were in Midnight Green. You're the, what, second most winningest team in the 21st century, only behind the New England Patriots. That's been all with these jerseys. You've already had them now for going on nearly 30 years. I don't know. I think Midnight Green, home, away, Kelly Green, alternate. That, to me, is the ideal setup. And if the NFL eventually lets teams wear a third helmet, Then you can also have the black jerseys. That's the one thing that'll be an interesting call in 2024. Does Jeffrey Lurie go back to the black jerseys? Does he keep the alternate Kelly Green? Does the NFL allow for an alternate jersey and a retro? That would be nice. But the way to do that, the Eagles would have to have um, the three helmet rule. Like the, The rule currently is you can have two helmets. It would have to move up to at least three. I guess one thing though, you wouldn't have to... I don't know the exact rule. I'll have to figure it out, but maybe they could go back to the black jersey, even if they keep Kelly green in 2024, if they just wear a green helmet again, like they normally do, as opposed to the black helmet of last year. So even if the two helmet rule stays in place, couldn't they go back to Kelly green, or I should say black with a green helmet and still keep Kelly green? I'm not sure. I'll look into that. I'll get back to you guys on Tuesday. Uniform rules. It's a, it's a wild universe. So we'll have to figure that out. But um, I, I, Personally, I still side with Midnight Green. I think they both look amazing, though. This year, I think the Eagles are going to look the best that they ever have in franchise history. What jerseys to get? I'm still deciding for me. Interesting what you guys got at the stadium. Hit me up at DiBiase LOE. I I would rank them. I don't really like getting quarterback jerseys. Jalen Hurts, number one, obviously, is really cool. But for me, the top jersey choice I'd want, number six, Devontae Smith. I love the single digits, especially for a wide receiver. Devontae's elite. He's young. He's going to be in Philly for a very long time. That's a cool one. Any of the legends can't go wrong with Jason Kelsey, with Brandon Graham, with Fletcher Cox, Lane Johnson. If you want to get Hassan Reddick, number seven also would be cool. If you want to get like a unique jersey, a number three Nolan Smith. It's more of a projection purchase when it comes to jerseys, but I think a number three Nolan Smith would be really cool. Again, I, I like single digits. That That would be the move for me. So if you want to get one that's more unique, maybe try Nolan. I don't know. That'd be interesting for sure. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this Monday edition of the Lockdown Eagles podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in and making us your first listen each and every day. We'll be back tomorrow as well and Monday through Friday for your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, thank you for downloading. Thank you for watching and listening. And let's go, Birds.